Here we're going to look at a problem from the 2019 New Zealand Mathematical Olympiad. So this is round one and it's question five. So our goal is going to be to find all natural numbers n such that n to the fourth minus n cubed plus 3n squared plus 5 is a perfect square. So before we look at the solution, let's look at some hints so that you guys can maybe try this. So the first hint is that a number m is a perfect square if and only if k squared times m is also a perfect square. In other words, if we have a perfect square and multiply it by another perfect square, we clearly have a perfect square, and then vice versa as well. Okay, and then the next thing that we want to do is pick this number k that will reduce this problem to a quadratic problem. So that means we will not have to really work so much with this quartic term in n, we'll have to work with quadratic terms in n. Okay, so maybe give these hints a go, try to solve the problem, and we'll come back with the solution. So hopefully those two hints were helpful, and now we're going to start building our solution. And we'll start our solution by making the following observation regarding the square of a somewhat general quadratic term. And the quadratic term I want to first look at is n squared minus n plus something which I'll just call box, and so that's free. And so if we square that, notice we're going to get n to the fourth minus 2n cubed plus a bunch of other stuff. So we don't need to know what the box is to know what the coefficients of n to the fourth and n cubed are. So that's why I haven't determined this yet. So now let's look at this compared to what we have. So we have n to the fourth minus n cubed. But in light of that first hint, we can really think about this as being multiplied by any perfect square. So is there any way to get some sort of expansion like this where we have the same perfect square multiplying each of these? And there is. And the way to do that is to put a 2n squared here minus n plus this box. Again, that box is yet to be determined. So if we square that, notice that we're going to get 4n to the fourth minus 4n cubed plus a bunch of other stuff. So I'll let you guys check that by carefully multiplying it out. But notice that we have 2n squared quantity squared. That's going to give us that. And then we have twice the product of 2n squared and minus n. That gives us this right here. But now notice that this expansion, 4n to the fourth minus 4n cubed, starts like 4 times this term right here, which is our goal term, which we want to show is a perfect square. So now we're going to use this fact, and that is our goal term, which is n to the fourth minus n cubed plus 3n squared plus 5 is a perfect square. If and only if this term, which I'll call a, which is 4 times our goal term, so that's going to be 4 n to the fourth minus 4 n cubed plus 12 n squared plus 5 is a perfect square. And let's just reiterate why we want to look at this term capital A, because it starts with 4 n to the fourth minus 4 n cubed. But this expansion of this quadratic also starts with 4 n to the fourth minus 4 n cubed. So perhaps we can look at their difference and then we've reduced this to a quadratic problem. And so now maybe what we really want to do is find two numbers, we'll call them B and C, such that when we take this expansion 2 n squared minus n plus B squared, we get something that is strictly less than A. And then when we take the same expansion with, but with a c, 2n squared minus n plus c quantity squared, we get something strictly bigger than a. And so that can pin down the possible values for this a. Okay, so I'll go ahead and bring that to the top and we'll keep going. On the last board, we argued that our goal expression is a perfect square if and only if four times our goal expression is a perfect square, and we called that a. And we took four times our goal expression because the quartic and the cubic terms matched with the expansion of this general quadratic term when squared. And so what we want is to tune these values b 
and C that make our new goal expression lie between these two perfect squares. And if we can get our new goal expression between those two perfect squares, then we have an idea for when this is a perfect square. Okay, so now what I wanna do is expand this far left and far right of that inequality. And um, we can do that by noticing the following. So this is gonna multiply out as follows. So we'll have four n to the fourth minus four n cubed. And then next we'll have plus four b plus one n squared. And then the next thing that we'll have is a minus two b n plus b squared. Okay, great. And then we'll have obviously something similar over here, but where b is being replaced with c. And so that's gonna give us four n to the fourth minus four n cubed plus four times c plus one n squared minus two times c times n plus c squared. Okay, so now what we can do is get rid of the like terms from each part of this inequality and notice this four n to the fourth minus four n cubed is the same in all parts of this inequality. So that gives us a new compound inequality where I've just subtracted that part off from each portion. So in other words, I have four b plus one times n squared minus two b n plus b squared. And that's gonna be less than 12 n squared plus 20, but that's gonna be less than four times c plus one times n squared minus two times c times n plus c squared. So we wanna tune our b and c so that this inequality always works. And so this would be tricky to do without kind of guessing and checking. And so we do wanna guess and check in order to get this. And the way that we'll do it is by looking at what is dominating each part of this inequality. And that would be the coefficient of n squared. And so notice, I'll just say that broadly, this inequality is being decided by 4b plus 1 being less than 12, which is less than 4c plus 1. So obviously not all values of b and c that make this inequality satisfied will make this inequality satisfied because when we're close to equality in each of these spots, there might be something happening with this minus term, which would throw it all off. But maybe a good place to guess is for b equal two and c equal five. And I think the real goal here is just to play around with a little bit until you find something that works. But let's see why b equals two might work. So if b is equal to two, here we have nine, which is definitely less than 12. Notice if we have b equals three, we get 13, which is bigger than 12, so that doesn't work. Um, and then why would c equal five work? Well, c equals five obviously gives us 21, which is bigger than 12. And so you might really guess that c could be equal to four or three, but you'll see that those do not create correct inequalities up here. So in other words, what we want is for b to be equal to two and c to be equal to three, and we will check that this inequality is satisfied in those cases. So I'll bring that up and then we'll do that. On the last board, we motivated our guess that four times our goal expression, which we also called capital A, lived between the square of these two quadratics. And this one was two n squared minus n plus two, and this one was two n squared minus n plus five. So now on this board, what we wanna do is show that this inequality is actually true. So like I said, on the last board, we just motivated why we guessed this number two and this number five. Now we're really gonna check that this is true. We're gonna start with this one, which I have in green. And we're gonna do that by looking at this term right here minus this term right here. And so notice if we take this capital A and subtract the square of this quadratic, and get a positive number, then this inequality is satisfied. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll do a minus two n squared minus n plus two quantity squared. Okay, great. 
So now I'm not gonna work out all of the arithmetic for doing this subtraction. I'll leave that to you guys, but I will tell you what you get. So you get three N squared plus 14 N plus 16. So that's what we get after doing A squared minus two N squared minus N plus two quantity squared. But now let's notice that we're only interested here for N which are natural numbers. In other words, n equals one, two, three, and so on and so forth. But if we plug in, in a natural number here, this thing is always positive. Great, and so what that means is that this inequality is satisfied. Good, so now let's move on to this one which I've uh, made the pink inequality. And this one we need to do kind of the opposite thing. In other words, this inequality holds if when we take the square of this quadratic and subtract a, we get something that's positive. So let's go ahead and do that. So we wanna do two n squared minus n plus five squared minus a. And just like in this example, I won't do all of the calculation details, I'll leave that to you guys. But what I will say is that here we get nine n squared minus 10 n plus five. So it's a little bit trickier to see that this is always positive, but we can actually rewrite it um, using a trick and then we'll see that it's obviously always positive. And the way that we can rewrite it is rewrite this thing as nine times n minus one quantity squared plus eight times n minus one plus four. There's actually a bunch of ways to show that this thing is always positive. This is maybe not even the simplest way, but notice what we have is that since n is always a natural number, it's always one, two, three, and so on and so forth. The smallest this can be is zero. The smallest this can be is zero. That's obviously always bigger than four, so this whole thing is bigger than zero. It's actually bigger than four, but um, bigger than zero is all we need. And so that means this inequality is also satisfied. So what that means is that this compound inequality is satisfied, which means we're set up to go on to the next step. So on the last board, we got done showing that this compound inequality involving four times our goal expression was true for all natural numbers n. Now what's really important to notice is that two n squared minus n plus two and two n squared minus n plus five only have two numbers between them. And that would obviously be two n squared minus n plus three and two n squared minus n plus four. And so if A is a perfect square that's between those two perfect squares, then that means it has to be one of those. So in other words, this splits into two cases. That first case is that A equals two N squared minus N plus three quantity squared, or A equals two N squared minus N plus four quantity squared. Okay, so let's reiterate what we did. So here we have a perfect square. Over here we have a perfect square. There are only two numbers between this one and this one. And so that means when you square them, there are only two perfect squares between this guy and that guy. And those two perfect squares are two n squared minus n plus three quantity squared or two n squared minus n plus four quantity squared. And so that gives us two equations to solve, a equals this thing squared or a equals that thing squared. So let's go ahead and look at this first one. In other words, a equals two n squared minus n plus three quantity squared, where again, a is this term up there. Okay, so now let's go ahead and solve this carefully. So let's copy a down. So we have four n to the fourth minus four n cubed plus 12 n squared plus 20. And so that's gonna be equal to whatever we get from squaring this. So we know the first two terms by our construction before. So that'll be four n to the fourth minus four n cubed. Now let's look at the n squared term. So we have two n squared plus So we have two n squared times three, so that's gonna give us six n squared, but we'll have two of those, that's gonna be 12 n squared. 
but then we're also gonna have this minus n times minus n, that'll be a plus n squared, so we'll have plus 13n squared. Okay, great. And then next, what are our n terms? So we'll have three times minus n, but we'll have two of those, so that's gonna give us minus six n, and then finally plus nine. So now let's notice that we can cancel a little bit. So we can cancel this out with this, the cubic term with the cubic term, and now we can start moving things over. So maybe I'll go ahead and move these two to the other side of the equation. So we'll have 13n squared minus 12n squared, so that's gonna give us n squared. We'll have minus 6n, and then we'll have nine minus 20, so that's gonna be negative 11 equals zero. Okay, fantastic. And now I'll leave it to you guys, but this is pretty straightforward to check that there are no integer solutions. And so since there are no integer solutions to this quadratic, then that means there are no integer solutions to our goal being equal to this perfect square. Okay, so now let's move on to the second case. So the second case, so I'll just go ahead and write that down again. So four into the fourth minus four n cubed plus 12 n squared plus 20. So that's gonna be equal to two n squared minus n plus four quantity squared. So let's see, that's gonna give us four into the fourth minus four n cubed. Now let's look at our n squared term. We'll have two n squared times four. So that's gonna be eight n squared but we'll have two of those, that'll be 16n squared, and then we'll have one more from this, so that'll be plus 17n squared. So now let's see what we have for our coefficient of n. So we'll have minus n times four, but we'll have two of those, so we'll have minus 8n, and then finally plus 16. Okay, so now we can do a similar thing. We can cancel out the quartic and the cubic terms and then move everything over. So I'll go ahead and move this 12n squared plus 20 over, and that's gonna give me 17 minus 12 is 5n squared, and then I'm gonna have minus 8n, and then minus four equals zero. Okay, great. But now let's see if we can factor this, and we can in fact factor this. And so this is gonna factor like 5n plus two, and then n minus two equals zero. So that's not too hard to see that that's how that factors. And so that gives us two solutions. One is like minus two fifths, so we don't need that solution because that's not a natural number. And then finally, n equals two is our other solution. So let's see what that does. That means n equals two makes our new goal, which is four times our old goal, a perfect square. In fact, it's 2n squared minus n plus four quantity squared. So let's just go ahead and check that if we plug this into the original, we in fact get a perfect square. So in other words, if we take n to the fourth minus n cubed plus three n squared plus five, and let's evaluate that at n equals two, let's see what we get. So we're gonna have 16 minus eight, so that's gonna be eight, and then we'll have plus 12, so that's 20 plus five, so that's 25, which is clearly equal to five squared, so that is a perfect square. And that's in fact the only perfect square. Okay, so we finished this problem.